This is the NES lecture on the energetic drivers, as you can see. I welcome you, and today we're going to talk about applying the energetic drivers to the healing of disease. Energetic drivers are something that Ness has that mm -hmm. I don't think anybody else has. And uh, it might be interesting to trace the story about how this happened and where they came from. What were we thinking when we did this? First of all, we have to remember that every sickness has as its major symptom the lack of energy. So it would be logical to presume that all disease is caused by not having enough energy, or that's the result of it. And something goes wrong with the energy field. So we began to think, well, maybe if we put more energy in, we have enough energy to heal that person. And then we thought, well, we don't really want to do laying on of hands or put them in orgone boxes or something. Why don't we get sick people to make their own energy and fix themselves up? All right, we need energy to heal and we want people to make their own. That was the general idea we were thinking. Then it came into my mind the, um, the physics law, which says that you, you can't get energy from nowhere. It doesn't just happen. You can only get energy from somewhere else. It can't be created or destroyed. So how do we get energy from somewhere else? And then we thought, well, if we've got an energy field, which is in fact what we say, energy, where does that energy come from in the first place? And here we return to a Chinese idea in traditional Chinese medicine that's, that's literally thousands of years old. The idea was that it was an energy channel, the meridian, and then inside driving that was one of the orbs. We are supposed to have orbs in the body. They did a little bit of anatomical dissection, but not much. But they decided that the organs of the body all looked like spheres and they were called orbs. And so the idea of the driver was actually taken from Chinese medicine but linked to a bit of physics as well to see what can we make of this ancient concept to make it work better. So then we're going to get energy from somewhere. Where does it come from? Well, we had to admit then that the Chinese idea of internal energy creating your own energy with organs, was related to creating energy from outside the body. So let's start with energy coming in. Here we sort of link with our external energy field environment. We know that fields are bits of energy in space, organised into a structure, that's what a field is, and we have to say, well, what sort of interreactions are we going to get between our body field and outside of us? And here, because of the shape of the body, we discovered axes. In about 1995, I actually found formulae for body axes right down through the centre of the body, head to toe, if you like. And I thought, well, what's that? the gravitational axis, I can actually feel it. We'll call that one gravitational the axis up-down. Then we know we've got an axis, the front of the body. The Chinese like to put the front of the body towards the east and the back of the body towards the west. So we thought, that's a polar axis, isn't it? That's Earth's magnetism, if you like. There's another type of energy but it's, a, it's at 90 degrees to the axis up and down. Then there was another, remember how you're supposed to stand in the anatomical position? There's another axis going through the arms, east to west. This could be north to south. All of these axes are at 90 degrees to one another. Now, the important thing about these three axes of the body and the big, this is what we call the big body field, um, is that they need to be at 90 degrees to each other. If they move a bit, it's, it's called being out of phase with each other. They're supposed to be at about 90 degree angle. We found if they move more than three, four degrees, the communication between the fields stops. 
and you're not getting the information you need. Now, there's other things we found out about the drivers, the organ drivers, is that they won't drive until the polarity and the big field aligner are reasonably correct. We made an infraceutical to use to correct the three axes of the body, big field aligner, and uh, we find that polarity and BFA need to be used before we start to work on the drivers themselves. Once we get those three axes correct, or, or fairly correct, we can then affect the connective tissues, that is the meridian system of the body. We can affect the circulatory system, the blood, the fluids of the body, as well as the nervous system, which is like the QED field of the body, that, that which makes the charge for the, for the body. So we're thinking of the body field as a hologram in space and we're thinking of the meridian as just a preferred pathway through this hologram. Nobody has ever found meridians. Nobody has ever found much evidence of them. And uh, this is not surprising because uh, if it's a hologram in the QED field, it's not going to be found by normal methods. We want to know how are we going to energize a hologram now, if we can't get energy from nowhere, where is it going to come from? It's true, but the interesting thing, if you've done electronics, as I have for many years, you know that if you get a resonant cavity, which is just a, like a, an orb, like a sphere, or a hollow tube, or in fact any shape, hollow tubes are very good and, and, and orbs, spheres are very good they will collect energy from space and store it as if like a capacitor stores. Uh, that's called a resonant cavity and the organs act like resonant cavities and the cavity frequency is dependent on how big the organ is. So organs collect energy, what sort of energy? Well years ago I did this enormous experiment where I had two big tubes made of copper that acted like a Faraday cage and we simply put an antenna in, sealed it right up, put the antenna in to see if energy appeared from nowhere in our copper tube. And of course it did. And that was a really important experiment that, that we did long before we got the concept of the drivers. Now this source energy idea I want to pursue because it turned out to be one of the most important ideas in Ness. There are antecedents of the source energy coming from India and China, but there are modern ideas about the source energy which should be investigated. And this one was from Lynn McTaggart who wrote a very popular book which sold very well on both sides of the Atlantic. The book is called The Field and you should read it because it's got a lot of the science puzzle of how there is actually energy in space. Quite a great deal of energy is stored in pure nothingness and you can't see it. And if we learned how to tap this energy, well, I think Lynn McTaggart thought it could be used for powering spaceships. No, it's used for powering us. That's the message. And. Um, we get all this indoctrination about how we live on carbohydrates. Well, we do, that's fine, carbohydrates, sugars, so on, fine. But we don't only live on that source of energy. So what else is there? We know we get carbohydrates, sugars, various types, and they rearrange themselves in the body during cell metabolism. And the hydrogen bonds release energy and then restore it in a different form, in a different place. That releases energy to do work in the body. Fine. But there are also the cavities in the body, the tubules in the body, which are collecting this energy from space and appear to store it. Then when you want it, you can use it. Maybe it helps to charge up the body field. But there's one more that's, that's perhaps even more interesting that you might not have thought of. This is the third type and it's called phonons. A phonon is between naught and a 
couple of hundred kilohertz. It's like a sound wave, but once it gets into a crystal lattice or a repeating structure of something like a chemical, it's called a phonon because it behaves slightly differently from a sound wave. Now, a lot of the drivers we have developed work off the sound. Nerve driver, for example, works off alpha waves, delta waves, beta waves, theta waves. You've heard of these if you've read books on how the nervous system is supposed to work. The brain actually creates waves between 4 hertz and 48 hertz. Why? Because it needs to power the nervous system. Have you ever thought of the nervous system working on sound? Well, the body wouldn't do it for nothing. There is a reason. Lung driver is another really interesting driver because we all make sounds and we can energise our bodies by doing so. We can make humming noises, singing noises, talking noises and so on. Between, well, for, for speech, it's 125 hertz to about 7,000 hertz. Of course, it goes much higher than that. But that's what we use to, in, in speech. Many of the interesting practices of Eastern mystics are based on relaxing and breathing and making a sound at the same time because the nervous system picks it up. The nervous system is very sensitive to sound. The lungs can make a sound. You can affect your mental state by making a noise. Everybody in India and China knows that. And we're reminding Europeans. The heart driver is another one. We all went to school and we learned lupped up, lupped up, mother's heart sounds and everything. Yes. But we went on the net and found that there are 136 sounds made by the heart. Very complex. The body also lives off heart sounds. It's another thing that's energising the field. Now I'd like to talk about another infraceutical called polarity. This one is about charge. Charge is terribly important in physics. I used to think it was spin, but now I think it's charge. Charge is critical to the way chemistry and biochemistry works. It's also critical to how the bonds between atoms and whatnot behave. And it's negative polarity which is needed. So we can talk about negative polarity so far as the electron goes, but we can go further and say, well, there are many things dissolved in the fluids in the body making ionic solutions. And these ions, we like negative ones. There's another type, it applies to breathing as well, because if we breathe in negatively, negatively ionised oxygen, you feel good. If you breathe in positively charged ions of oxygen, you feel sleepy and down. And all it is, all those um, ionisers are for the air, is just a, a spike sticking out into the air with 4,000 volts negative on it or so. And it even removes toxins from the atmosphere and it forms a dust around the needle and so on. They're very good. I used to have them in my lectures when I was an acupuncture teacher to stop my students from going to sleep when I was talking to them. So polarity gets upset by electromagnetic fields. It gets upset particularly by plane travel. That's exposure to uh, very high energy particles at plus 40,000 feet, gets up to during stress and in poor oxygenation states. That is when you're not breathing or it could be when you've got a vitamin B12 deficiency and you haven't got enough oxygen carrying capacity in your blood. The uses of polarity, to, well first of all to assist in detox of the cell. You can go on Google if you like and look at Otto Warburg he won a Nobel Prize in 1931, a long time ago, but Nobel Prize winners shouldn't go out of date. They should have a permanent place in science. Otto War Warburg pointed out that oxygen is the key to cellular detoxification and is a major preventative factor in cancer development. 
So that's a possible application of polarity is for detox of the cell. Another one is for mental integration when you're simply confused and can't think. Which is likely to happen after plane travel. And people have reported to us that very good with hot flushes in menopause and the confusion that goes with it. Cell driver. Cell driver is perhaps the most important of all the drivers that we've produced. If it comes up, you must treat it. That is a, a rule. Of course you can break it, this is a rule. It always comes up in arthritis of any type and it always comes up when there's some neoplastic activity, benign or non-benign. You can go to Google, if you like, and look up the word centrosome. It's one of the organelles, one of the little bits in the cell. This is the focus of the microtubules. Now, first of all, microtubule is an immensely tiny, thin thing that floats around in the cytoplasm of the cell. We like to look at them as like, like a tuning fork. The length is lambda, that's the, the wavelength of the information. And the diameter tells you about the Q or the quality factor of how much information is stored, what quality it is. So why do we get in the cell a centrosome structure with a lot of microtubules pointing to it. It's as if they're sending energy to it, as if to direct its activity. I could be wrong, we haven't researched it. So the centrosome, it turns out, is there to maintain the stability of chromosomes during cell replication. And of course, any cancer researcher will tell you cancer is about something going wrong during cell replication. It's about something going wrong in, in the control of growth. So the, the, um, the distribution of the chromosomes is controlled by the, um, the centrosome after mitosis. And even modern cancer research points to the chaos in the chromosome that occurs during cancer. So there's an important possible application. We're not making a claim about it. We're saying here is a possibility. There are a number of cell driver syndromes. The first syndrome with cell driver is geopathic stress. Here we're talking about Earth's gravitational energy and Earth's magnetic energy, both of which are real enough. There are ways of measuring gravity and magnetism, so it's real energy. This seems to project itself when these two energies combine. You get a projected picture on the surface of the Earth, forming a sort of a network. It's even possible that the Earth itself has a quantum field. You bet you never thought of that before. Earth has a QED field because it's got, it's energized from outside by light. It's measured, it's energized inside by heat. There's ionized air around it and there's a huge magnetic field in the Earth's core and another one outside in the atmosphere. So, just think about that. And we need to look, if you go to Google, look at Hartman and Curry, both of whom have grids. It's like just a network of crisscross across the Earth. You won't find anyone describing how strong they are or what their frequency is or how we measure them. Science is not interested. If it can't be measured and quantified, it's not science, it's philosophy. And I, I don't really agree with this. I think in the case of this QED field, we should be able to find a method of measuring. So far, it's defied us, but I think we've got one. Geopathic stress could be the cause of up to 30% of disease. That's a huge statement. It is not just from eating chocolate and chips at all. Geopathic stress is largely overlooked as a cause of disease, even though we know there are from statistics. Uh, cancer researchers do a lot of statistical analysis as a, as a tool to lead them in the right direction. 
and they find cancer clusters, a whole lot of infantile cancers around one town. Or they find one house where everybody who lives there gets sick. Or even in Australia, I lived in a place called Cancer Valley. Now, I can't mention what it is, of course. But I think every country has got, has got some knowledge about this. So, when you mix big field aligner with cell driver, if they both come up on the nest green, that's a sign that you've got geopathic stress. We know too that geopathic stress affects the liver quite bad, liver function quite badly. So what do you do about it? Well, if you're Chinese, if you're a Chinese geomancer, you run around with mirrors and put stakes in the ground and, and there's lots of things that you're supposed to do. Whether or not they work, I'm not able to tell you. Most people say if you're getting sick from where, you, if, if it's a house where you're getting sick, you feel very ill or can't sleep there, move your bed, move the bedroom, move the house. Underground streams, underground caves, cavities again, can cause this manifestation of geopathic stress. And we think that the cell driver and the BFA together will have quite an effect on it. Right, this is the next, this is number two syndrome of the cell driver. It's a pattern that you can look out for on your nest screen. You need to look out for cell driver plus immunity driver plus thymus driver. We're looking for patterns. It's the pattern that's the diagnosis. The individual items on NESS aren't really a diagnosis, but you can see a pattern and you can be more sure when you see this pattern. What is this combination of drivers for? For skin lumps, skin bumps, skin tags, even some sorts of growths. What is it doing? The cell driver is affecting every type of cell in the body. Immune driver is affecting the lymph cells and the thymus driver is affecting the antibodies. Thymus driver is about long-term immunity. To this, we can add a star. To if needs be, later on in the treatment, we can add energetic star number one to help that's on, on its way. Cell driver plus heart imprinter is our third syndrome that we can look at. In the cell, we've got many, many different structures. The meaning of their activity is a bit better known than it was. They write very big books on cell biology, that doorstopper books. There is a thing called a Golgi body and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And these together have an effect on the synthesis of steroids. Steroids, you know, it's not just the Olympic Games. You need them in your body to stop inflammation. Believe it or not, we need cholesterol to make steroids. Ster cholesterol is needed in your body. You don't want too much. The Golgi body and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum also affect lipid synthesis. If you're making too much fat, for example, a wrong quality fat. It's also about utilization of calcium in the skeletal muscles and very important it's for detox of foreign proteins. Proteins are the big information carriers in the body. So if we've got wrong information from wrong proteins we the body wants to get rid of them. There's something about the heart that's gone into the English language and lots of others about having an open heart, to lose heart, not to have a heart, to put your heart into something, or worst of all, to have a broken heart. All of these things are linguistic examples of how important our heart is. Not so much as a pump. It turns out we discovered the axes in, of the body in 1990-something, and it took until about 2005 odd until we suddenly realised that the, the axes, three axes of the body all go pretty close to the heart or chest cavity. I know the heart's slightly to the left, that's all right. So the four chambers of the heart were combined into one infraceutical and we called it heart imprinter. And the job of the heart, so far as we're concerned, when it's not pumping, 
it's also imprinting messages by pressure waves or sound into blood proteins. Proteins are the big message carriers of the body. The biologists agree with us. It's okay, we can agree with them on this. So the imprinter, what is it doing? It's putting a little energetic mark onto the protein. The protein, being a message character, will carry that message to every cell in the body. So when you learn something, that knowledge goes to every part of you. Well, you know when you get your leg chopped off, you probably don't. A very small proportion of the population knows, but we know that they get a feeling, you know, a phantom limb thing. You think it's there. And I'm saying this is because the memory of who you are and what's there is in every cell, not up here. And we get other beautiful examples in massage where people get enormous emotional discharge during a simple little massage on your back. There's memory stored in every muscle. And it's stored there by the action of the heart imprinter. So the imprinter is interesting because it's the four energetic integrators mixed together, representing the two atria and the two ventricles. It's something incredibly simple that's turned out to be one of our most important infraceuticals. After we'd made the new heart imprinter, we did some research to find out if it matched with emotions, as the heart is where the emotions are supposed to happen, as in broken heart. And the extraordinary thing was all the positive emotions matched, but the negative ones didn't. And um, this is nice. We thought, oh, we've got the remedy that's going to make everybody happy at last. We'll sell a lot of these. Of course, that's too good to be true. But it does have some effect to push you towards a positive outlook. So it's very hard to experience positive emotions when your heart is damaged. So I think, why don't we therefore repair the heart damage and you'll be able to be more positive? Imprinter may indeed add a little sparkle to your day. On the physical side, we found that it matches to calcification of the heart, sclerosis and aortic stenosis. In other words, it's, it's going to help with actual physical heart damage as well as the emotional side. We had quite a problem when it came to how do we affect blood pressure. Blood pressure is something that's not understood and it's pretty certain that the body field has an effect on it. I've done experiments where we can reduce blood pressure by taking so many drops of an infraceutical every five minutes, a test blood pressure, blood pressure drops a little bit, you take some more and blood and so on. We've done little experiments to see what happens, but so far as coming up with a blood pressure treatment, we don't have it. So because we don't have um, a, a, an exact treatment for it that's going to work on everybody, we suggest you keep on your existing treatment. Our basic research has linked the heart imprinter with the systole, the peak of the contraction of the heart. Now we'll have a little talk about the heart driver. The heart driver has been made f out of bits of the electrical conduction system of the heart. The heart contracts in a certain way and makes a wave output, electrocardiograph if you like, that tells you a whole lot about intimately about what happens during that contraction. The heart driver is about the parasympathetic and sympathetic innervation, the conduction system of the heart, which are all found on the outside of the organ. Energetic integrator 4 is actually mixed in with this driver. Now can I make a simple distinction? Heart imprinter for inside the heart, heart driver for outside the, the outside of the heart, which is where the conduction system is. So it's very easy to distinguish between them. There was a very strange effect we noticed. I think we discovered this when I was in LA and we were trying it on a Hollywood starlet. And she was taking heart driver and her, the texture of her skin became nice and silky smooth.
It works, doesn't it? Yeah, it's very good. I don't know how long it lasts, this effect. So uh, this is interesting because the traditional Chinese idea, I mean, naturopaths all want to treat the liver and the bowel for, for skin troubles. The, the, the Chinese don't, they treat the heart. We suggest using heart driver for conditions of the skin, in particular for the face. And if the rhythm of the heart has been affected badly by a bad influenza attack, which is quite common, the, this is the one to use because it's about the rhythm of the heart. It can be that the influenza virus gets in to this part of the exterior part of the heart, being in the chest cavity, and you get heart arrhythmia for years after having a flu. No one knows quite what to do about it. It is possible to use Integrator 6 with heart driver. When you do this, you're having a special effect on the bundle of hiss. That's for the more technical who, who want to, uh, technically minded people who want to affect a particular part of the heart. If it comes up, if heart driver and Integrator 6 both come up on your screen, I'm saying it's a good idea to use them together if it links with the patient's symptom. And this is the key to how we use the Nest screens. We have to know enough about each test to be able to put them together to make sure we get a clinical result. The next one I want to talk about is circulation driver. This is one of the new drivers that's been added in the last year by Ness. And it is of some interest because it appears sometimes with the heart imprint or heart driver. And when it does so, it's an indicator that there is physical heart disease. All right? It's not a diagnosis, it's a guidepost if we can make it clear that it's not really a diagnosis. However, we have used in this, in the construction of this, you can understand it better when you know what we put in it, all right? And what we put in it was nerve plexuses, muscle walls of the arteries, red blood cells, oxygen, and the nerve plexuses that are about the opening and shutting of arteries and veins for that matter. It goes very well with big field aligner. We're very responsive to energy fields outside the body. It will affect the circulation more than a lot of other things because it's a fluid. Hernias, which are moderately impossible to treat, but we can try, may show up as a circulation driver difficulty. And something I have to remark that's terribly important is that the circulatory system of the body is where all the junk gets stored. You know, we might have been living in a toxic environment for 10, 20, 30, 40 years, and it gets salted away in the lipids, in the circulatory system. If we decide to go in there and clean up the circulatory system, which means working on the fats, when we get rid of the fats, you also get rid of the toxins which are stored inside them and then the liver begins to get overloaded with toxins. So can I make an obvious suggestion, obvious now that I mentioned it, is that if you're using circulation driver, don't forget to help the liver as well. Just a little hint which could prevent discomfort for your patient. Circulation driver is not used for blood infections, clots or aneurysms. We don't treat emergency cases. Ness is for long-term health treatment. However, what you can do with circulation driver, it's all right to use it for shock, arteriosclerosis, Raynaud's disease, and believe it or not, migraine. You might not have thought of it for migraine, but this driver has within it the bits and pieces of the nerve plexuses that are for clamping down, closing down blood vessels or opening them too far in the head. Nerve driver. Can we start a new one? Nerve driver. This one is being used clinically, I hear. We, we just get stories back at the, at the present time. One day we're going to have lots of data and big research papers and so on. We're getting reports that it's being used for sleep apnea and insomnia. Of course, there are stronger things that you could use, such as the energetic stars, like energetic star 8, which we call chill or the big one for nervous system um, ES3.
But of course, you start work with the driver just doing a little bit gently. If you go in and give somebody ES3 straight away, it's going to cause massive detox of the nervous system, which will make them feel quite uncomfortable. Nerve driver was one of the first ones to be discovered, and it was, was the result of my reading. I actually read a psychology book, uh, not for the first time, and I discovered that they still had the stuff in about alpha, beta, theta, and delta waves, all electrical patterns, which I mentioned earlier in this lecture. But electrochemical activity is perhaps a precursor of nerve function, and it acts to support the quantum field information network. So we need to activate the nervous system so it will work. If you like, you can call nerve driver, trying to give somebody more nervous energy. And they're going to produce this themselves. The nerve driver also has within it tags for the axons, the dendrites, the nucleus of the nerve cell, and so on. But the driver is not about neurotransmitters. It's about reinvigorating the nerve cell and getting some nervous energy going with some low frequency impulses. Low frequency energy is really what this driver is all about and we think that our QED field theory goes quite well with that. That is, we want to make the nervous system work better. Nearly everybody thinks that we're just going to give neurotransmitters. No, 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 life is too short and too complex. All you have to do is energise the nervous system as a unit. Allopathic treatments for the nervous system that work are not exactly legion. There are plenty of treatments they have which will stop the nervous system working. So the nerve driver is a gentle thing and it's not a stimulant, so Batman would have approved it. It's, it's, it's too good to be true. It's non-addictive. You can't take too much of it. You see, see what I mean? Because it is in harmony with what the body actually wants. Now, for all those who are interested in the idea of the microtubule as a tuned piece of antenna, we'll be interested in this idea applied to the nervous system because we sort of have a star-shaped cell with a huge thing of hand-shaped dendrites and then a very long tube called the ax axon that varies in length from a few centimetres right to... There are some axons that go almost the length of the spine. Could it be that these axons are just tuned resonators that can carry specific bits of information because of their length? We've got to explain why the nervous system's all chopped up into tiny little bits. It's not a continuous unit at all. So you can ask a lot of questions about the traditional ideas of the nervous system. And I, I, I'm acting a bit confident here. It's not a good idea to be overconfident in medicine because it's a pretty difficult area. But we know we're getting some results with nerve driver, so we think we're onto the money. And I'll just point out the difference between us and the allopathic model. This is about lung driver, folks. All we've done to make lung driver is to get real lung tissue and we try to see how lung tissue relates to the gas transfer mechanism. Oxygen, carbon dioxide, gas transfer. And this distinguishes it from bronchial tissue that everybody thinks bronchi when you think lungs. No, no, no. Bronchi is something else. So we're not going to necessarily use lung driver for bronchial asthma at all. We're going to use it to get the gas transfer working better. I wouldn't use lung driver for asthma as a general rule. There may be cases when it's needed, but um, naturally lung driver will show when there are a large number of energetic terrains. That's a funny thing to say, isn't it? But we know that these low level viruses, or if they're not viruses, they're terrains, where do they live? They live in the lung tissue. A lot of this nest stuff is quite different from what you've heard before. And uh, that's why we have the lecture, because it's so interesting. Uh, it's, a lot of it's quite revolutionary. We've got another driver called stomach driver. This is, this is the first one that I invented because Harry was so sick. And uh, he sort of started functioning again straight after. It was 
it was, it was so magic we went on to discover the other 16. This one will affect the lining of the stomach, but not only that, of the whole gut. The whole GIT is the same embryologically. This is the gut. That's the bit that turns inwards during embryological development. So it includes the throat and the mouth. And because a lot of heavy metal intoxication comes from the food we eat, not all, there's some, the GIT gets a lot of intoxication these days. So it's the lining and the muscle behind which, which, is, um, which has got all the toxins in it. The most likely one, of course, is cadmium, which has a special affinity for the stomach. If you want to find out about the cadmium stomach link, simply go to the proving, the home, Hanumanian proving, the homeopathic proving of cadmium. Cadmium metallicum. It's amazing. It links to the stomach. What we've done in this is we've got lots of knowledge from different areas and put it together into a, a workable framework for you, and that's a good example. When you use stomach driver, there's quite a strong initial detox reaction because of what I've said. The, the toxins from the vegetables and fruits and so on all end up in the stomach lining. There is also a part, uh, it's got also very big effects on the long bones of the legs, which of course contain marrow. This marrow is crucial to the function of the immune system. Have you ever thought of using stomach driver for long-term immune rescue? Well, that's what you do. Long bones of the, uh, of the legs. It should also be remembered that there's a branch of the stomach meridian in Chinese medicine which goes to the prefrontal lobes of the brain. So it's going to have all sorts of effects on the higher centres of behaviour. And I mention this because we seem to have got reports that sometimes people get nice improvements, just improvements to Alzheimer's disease and related degenerative conditions. Uh, it's also a possibility for anorexia. That's the mental aspect of your stomach, if you like. So that's something you could always remember. Stomach driver, kidney driver and heart driver should always be remembered for anything inside the cranium. For the cortex, you should always think of integrator 7. For corpus callosum, you should always think of integrator 12. For the midbrain, you should also think of heart driver and integrator 4. And here's a tip. If the stomach driver simply won't come right after months of treatment, it's a possibility you need to treat kidney driver. They have a sort of a seesaw effect on each other. You affect one, it has an effect on the other, and vice versa. Muscle driver. When we say muscle, we mean striated muscle or skeletal muscle only. It is not for cardiac muscle. Heavy metals have an affinity with the stomach lining, as I've just said, and cadmium in particular. The Chinese always say the stomach meridian energy would affect the muscles. So there's a link between stomach and muscles that's quite strong, the way Chinese medicine's taught even today. Now, when do you use muscle driver? This is what you really need to know. We don't have any data to support it, but we have got matches with reduced muscle tone, arthritis of some types, myositis and myelitis, and myophysitis. So anything with the word myo in front of it, it's a possibility. If you're looking at myocardium, which has got myo in it, it's best to look at pairs of meridians, in which case I would suggest um, for a gentle treatment, energetic integrators 11 and 12. We go on to skin driver, and I'm sorry I called it skin driver. Uh, I think it should have been called epithelial driver. There are lots and lots of different tissue types in the skin, in lots of layers and so on. You've all learnt that. But um, it's for the square ones, little square cells. 
If you like, another way of thinking about skin driver, we could have called it ENT driver, ear, nose and throat, because we have tested to see what disease states it matches with. We get acne rosacea, catarrh, Crohn's disease, an allergic reaction at the skin and bowel tissues, which is just normally called colitis. It is best not to treat skin diseases with this driver. What is he saying? Remember I said to use heart driver for skin. So what do we do? It's the epithelial coating of all of the organs. And of course, the bowel has an epithelial coating. The ear, nose and throat have epithelial coating. So think of it more for catarrh and organs that are inflamed and you won't go far wrong. Now we have another super important driver that is probably just as important as cell driver because we need to use it all the time. And it's got an awful lot in it. It's a very complex driver and of course the liver does everything so you would expect a complex driver. Uh, it's got cell nucleus centrioles, Golgi body, mitochondrion, alveoli and centricina cells, beta cells, pancreatic alpha cells, liver cells, etc. It's got a lot of stuff. And in turn, it's got quite big ways of application for headaches, fluid retention, oxalic acid production, optic neuritis, macular degeneration, even pH correction. One of the main functions of the liver is related to breaking down of larger molecules into smaller molecules so that they can be excreted. That's really one of the things that the liver does. The liver also produces very large number and different types of enzymes which are used for various control purposes around the body. Liver is also very sensitive to geopathic stress and you don't get the enzymes produced when you have geopathic stress. Strangely enough, we don't use this for jaundice, hepatitis or migraines. I think if you get a migraine, if you've ever had a migraine, go very easy on liver driver. Now we have to look to understand this one. We've got to know the um, trajectory of the liver meridian in Chinese medicine. And the big story is it goes right around the liver itself, the gallbladder, little branch to pancreas, then the branch going up the back of the throat, behind the eyes, the macula, the back part of the eye, straight through the top of the head, comes out here. So not many people realise, but we, we could have called this eye driver because it's so important for the back part of the eye and the optic nerve. But it's not for the front part of the eye and it's not for the eye muscles. Eye muscles, you use energetic integrator seven. The kidney driver. This is the only driver that we said was so desperately important, you must use it if it comes up. Uh, when it's turned into an integrator, it becomes just as important. This one is supposed to match to the kidney tubules. In other words, the real kidney function. Everything that happens in the tubule is about rejecting certain ions and letting other ions through. It's a semi-permeable membrane that lets certain things happen. So it can be used for swelling of the kidney organ. And we have got reports of cases where that worked. Renal colic, nephritis, even concussion because the, um, there's a link between the kidney meridian, the kidney, back of the tongue, the back of the teeth, the wisdom teeth belong to kidney and the whole of, the, um, of what's inside your cranium can be affected by kidney driver. So remember that it, we couldn't claim Ness as a diagnostic machine simply because it's picking up the meridian energy which could be, you know, is it the brain or is it the tongue or is it the kidney or is it the knees? Uh, there's an effect of the kidney driver on the knees as well. In some cases of cancer, kidney driver will come up and we're not recommending this for any sort of cure 
but the nucleus of the cell does become quite chaotic when cancer develops. And if you wonder why kidney driver comes up, it's because there is an energetic link between the kidney driver and the nucleus of every cell in the body. Immunity driver, again, this one's used an awful lot. This has been tagged to combine the various blastic cells in the bone marrow that create blood cells, in particular the cells that are used in immunity. And this means not only red blood cells, it also means lymphoblasts, or plasmablasts and macroblasts. Mast cells are also found here as tags. Splenic tissue is energetically related to this as well because there is obviously, from physiology research, there's some link with the provision of immunity with the spleen organ. Nobody knows what the spleen does. It's obviously very important for something. This could be what it is. This driver is not really about antibodies. It's about lymph, isn't it? Many, many different classes and types of lymphatic cells in the body. They've all got code numbers and so on, which you, if you know enough medicine, you'll know about them. We don't know which ones it helps to create. There's some research for somebody to do. This driver is not used for antibodies or formation of antibodies. For that one, we need to use thymus driver, which is long-term immunity provision. It is more about the immune system that grabs hold of foreign material, eats them up, like the Pac-Men in the washing powder. You remember that TV ad years ago about the Pac-Men? I don't know if it was worldwide. Okay, the lymph cells are a key part in the antiviral mechanism of the body. Cell driver and immunity driver should always be used together. This is one of my favourite rules. Because of this limitation, it is quite in order to use immunity driver together with thymus driver if there is a general collapse of immunity. Please bear in mind the length of time that it takes to make a new blood cell bit of the immune system between five days and 29, 30 days could be longer. But surprisingly, you can still get quite a strong initial reaction to this. But remember, there'll be a, a delayed reaction to the use of immunity driver. I like to use immunity driver for colds, flus and so on. Pancreas driver, this is related physiologically to the liver driver, of course. The pancreas is a dual organ that has several different functions. So to tag, we had to tag this driver with the islets of Langerhans, alpha and beta cells, vagus nerve, lymph, head and tail of the pancreas organ. So it's both parts of the pancreas, the one concerned with digestion just as well, it also contains integrators 4 and 12. So it's quite a complex driver, which uh, won't necessarily show up if you've got diabetes. There are matches, not necessarily to diabetes. Surprising, isn't it? It matches to indigestion, pancreatitis, lack of appetite, and hypoglycemia. It's possible that this diabetes mellitus won't show up until the big field aligner has been corrected. You know, we ask you to correct the human body field sequentially. If you've still got an error in the early part of the test, you can get subsequent errors in later parts of the test. And this is one we know about. We go on to splenomentum driver. This driver is tagged with the red and white pulp of the spleen, as well as the omentum, a type of mesenteric sheet found in the lining of the abdomen. All parts of the thymus also match to it. The spleen has three functions, phagocytosis of older erythrocytes, blood regulation and, most importantly, it acts as a source of lymphocytes and plasma cells, hence making antibodies for protection against specific organisms. 
the omentum has an immune function specifically for the peritoneal cavity and is most active if there is peritonitis. It supplies leukocytes to the cavity and is so dynamic that it will even engulf and seal off contaminated areas of the cavity with collagen. In adults, the omentum may have been damaged by surgery. There may be a use here for treating chronic recurring abdominal hernia. So far we have no cases. In traditional Chinese medicine, there is believed to be a link from the spleen to the lung. But Ness research does not support this directly. We do, however, find a link with the thymus, an immune system organ, right in the middle of the chest cavity. Establishment of long-term viral immunity depends on the thymus. The thymus may have a role in energetic treatment of allergies. It is also of enormous interest that the spleenomentum driver matches specifically with the following organisms that may infect the peritoneal cavity as well as the lungs. Bordetella pertussis, in other words, whooping cough, Haemophilus influenzae, childhood chest disease, Klebsiella, which can cause destruction of lung cells, and Neisera catarralis, respiratory infection in children. You should note that Klebsiella types are harmless in the gut or abdominal cavity and yet become dangerous in the chest cavity. In the chest, Klebsiella can destroy lung tissues. So, splenomentum driver can be used in chronic chest troubles where there is no clear diagnosis possible. Splenomentum driver can therefore be suggested also in cases where there is low chronic level peritonitis causing abdominal swelling. And it can be used for bronchial asthma where there is chronic low level bacterial infection. Even chronic low-level appendicitis may respond. Poor immune function in childhood is another possible application, and it should be remembered that this driver links well to energetic integrator 8 because it affects not only the liver but also is responsive to electromagnetic radiation generally, which may affect some children. After taking spleen driver for 10 days, the liver driver may also be needed. Splenomentum driver can be taken at the same treatment time as Energetic Star 1 because Energetic Star 1 is a general radiation corrector and is used for all those exposed to electrosmog. Over thousands of years, Chinese doctors have noticed certain diagnostic features of the energetic spleen, not, of course, of the spleen organ. Doctors have noticed that the lips may become dry and discoloured, and the very tip of the nose can alter colour and texture when the spleen energy is not functioning normally. The scalp also was considered to be linked to the spleen as well as saliva production. Now there is one very important aspect of spleen I have to tell you. In traditional Chinese medicine, the spleen was supposed to be able to respond to emotions. And the one we're concerned with here is long-term grudges and feuds. If you take spleen momentum driver for long periods, and I mean four to six weeks, some of these emotions may begin to come to the surface. When it does, you have to treat the heart. And we suggest that you use ESR with ES1 to stop the stress on the heart. Splenomentum driver can also be used for correcting integration between the two hemispheres of the brain and therefore may be useful in long-term treatments for learning difficulties as well as emotional troubles. Last of all, we have to say something about dosage. In children who are sensitive, you may only use three to six drops per day. 
In adults, you may use six to 15 drops. Uh, for longer term use, we suggest six drops a day. But in more serious diseases, you might have to use a stronger dosage. And a stronger dosage would be 15 drops twice a day. The period of use for a splenomentum driver is between three to six weeks. This one was added fairly late because uh, one of our employees broke his arm. <laughs> was that it? And oh, it's all right, we can fix that uh, in extra quick time. It was just a fracture and it mended in one week instead of six or something. And he went back to have it x-rayed and they denied he'd ever broken his arm because it, was called, it had disappeared so quickly. So possible use for rapid healing or, fra or fractures that won't heal for some reason. It's, a, it's just a combination of three other drivers, the liver, pancreas and kidney. They do have an effect, it will have an effect on the bone, it will have an effect on detox, but it's about sending energy up the body towards the heart. If an organ hasn't got enough energy and it's sick, it's not a good idea to stimulate it. This is one of our rules you get from our course. Uh, it's from Chinese medicine, it's a very sensible rule. You can always treat something that's giving energy to the heart. Our heart relies on energy coming upwards from those three different organs. So, yeah, there is an effect on um, swelling of the heart when it hasn't got enough energy. You give bone driver for swelling of the heart. Uh, bone driver can cause big detox reactions as well. There is also a detoxification reaction when you use bone tissue simply because it's got pancreas, liver and kidney. They're all going to be in some way related to detox. So there will be reactions. The kidneys and the liver have a physiological role in breaking down chemical molecules and sending the unwanted ones out of the body. It's a good idea not to overdose on bone driver while you're having a detox session. Or on the other hand, it's a good idea if you've got stuck and the detox isn't being completed and you've got aches, pains, or liver aches, or kidney aches, or something, try bone driver. Uh, it's for calcifications of organs. We get calcification of the heart, the liver, the brain, the kidney. So again, Alzheimer's disease, calcification the outside of the brain. It's a possibility. Think also of osteoporosis. We've heard some remarkable uh, stories about the effects of this driver. That's the end of the lecture on the drivers, which I hope you've learned a lot, and I hope now you've learned how to use them correctly. Thank you very much.